Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Nitin Nair. I'm an engineer here with uh, Thousand Eyes and a first time uh, UK North attendee. Uh, really excited to be talking to you guys here. And what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about some of the major internet outages uh, which happened in 2017, uh, give you guys uh, some of the analysis that we've done for some of our customers uh, and share our take on uh, what, what happened there. Cool. So what I'm going to do today is uh, essentially talk about three outages. We'll start off with uh, what happened at Marketo uh, with their DNS, uh, with their domain expiration. Uh, then we'll jump, have a quick look at AWS S3 and the outage there. And then finally, we'll have a look at uh, Rootly coming out of Ross Telecom. Uh, I want to keep it uh, interactive. So I've got some slides, but I'll also take you into live data just to show you uh, what we were seeing from our vantage points around the world. So let's get started. All right. So the first one is uh, Marketo. Uh, Marketo is a, um, as you know, market, a marketing automation advertising company. Um, and there was a market, uh, Marketo outage in the main service um, in the month of July, so a couple of months back, which was related to a domain name expiration. So let's, let's have a look at that. Uh, just to set the stage, so uh, Thousand Eyes essentially uh, provides inter internet intelligence. What we've got is we've got a, over a thousand agents which are deployed across 150 cities around the world. And um, our customers use these agents to essentially run different kinds of tests to uh, different kinds of services. So what you're seeing here is an example where we were running some tests uh, from a HTTP server availability, from a network availability, et cetera, to app.marketo.com, which is sort of the main domain, main service from Marketo. And what we noticed on July 25th, around four in the morning Pacific time, was uh, there's a big drop in the HTTP server availability. So if I go back to the screen here, and this is interesting because it's, issues there. I'm just going to go back to slides. Uh, so what we saw here was um, essentially around, um, around this time here, we started seeing a drop in the availability from a HTTP server perspective. And what was happening here is our agents around the world uh, started reporting that the service was unavailable, TCP connect sessions were failing, et cetera. And this could uh, be directly correlated to some of the network drops that you see here as well um, on the service. So if I go here, so this is when the service was healthy. Uh, you can actually see from the map, everything's nice and green. And then as we go into the outage um, here, you can actually see that there's a lot more red in the map uh, down here. Um, to troubleshoot this, what we do then is we essentially go to the network view. Uh, um, and you see at the network level, essentially on the bottom graph here, the fact that the average packet loss correlated with the HTTP server availability. So the avail availability from HTTP server level dropped to around 60%. The packet loss from a network levels are at there. So clearly looks like something which is a network related issue. So what we do is we go down deeper into this um, and using some of the path visualization information that we have, we can actually get the whole TCP layer three route all the way from our cloud agents to the specific uh, servers where Marketo is hosted. What's really interesting about Marketo is it's actually Akamai fronted, so it's CDN uh, providers Akamai. And during the outage, what we noticed was um, for all the cloud locations which were going to Akamai fronted uh, locations, so what you see in the uh, bottom there, the green locations, everything's good. But we see this rogue um, IP address, which is uh, 108.91.197.132, where all the traffic's getting dropped. So it's interesting, all the other traffic's fine except for that one location. And the other thing we noticed was while the servers which are behaving 
properly were hosted in Akamai's network. This specific rogue server was actually hosted out of a network called Confluence. So as when we were looking at this and trying to troubleshoot what was going on or explain what happened, the next quick question which came into our minds was, why is traffic for app.marketer.com being sent to Confluence? Uh, to answer this question, what we did is we kind of jumped into some of the DNS data that we were collecting for this. Uh, so Marketo as a, uh, runs their own DNS servers. Uh, there's ns1.marketo.com and ns2. Um, and these are run out of their own internal networks. And what we started noticing was, um, in addition to those, D those two servers, DNS queries were also being sent to that same third rogue IP address, which was the 208.91.197 address that we saw. So this started looking very, very suspicious and very, very familiar to a DNS poisoning kind of an attack. Um, so we had to see further why this was happening, where this is, why is the traffic not being sent to NS1, which is hosted by Marketo, but to Confluence Networks. The final piece of the puzzle was looking at the who is information. So we did a lookup on who is, uh, a, a who is lookup for the Marketo domain, and we saw that the registrar network solutions uh, had essentially changed the name servers to something which is very interesting. So as you see in the screen here, it's actually changed it to ns1.pendingrenewaldeletion.com. At the same time, they had actually transferred, they started mapping the uh, directing traffic to Confluence, which was now uh, giving out, uh, responding to DNS requests from their DNS servers. And now that we sort of took a step back, you realize what happened. So uh, Marketo was late on paying their renewals, forgot to renew their domain name. When that happened, uh, Network Registrar, which is their, uh, the network, uh, solution which is the registrar essentially uh, changed their DNS and started pointing their traffic to their partner Confluence Network. They've done this in the past as well in some of the outages in 2013. And as a result, if I'm a user for Marketo and if I'm going to app.marketo.com, my traffic gets black holed. Uh, so that's the explanation behind it. There was one other additional impact this system had, uh, this, this issue had. Um, when Confluence Network gave out those, uh, those poisoned uh, DNS resp uh, responses, they actually set the DNS TTL in those responses to two days. So for Marketo customers to get service availability back to uh, 100%, it actually took almost two days after they had uh, renewed their domain. Uh, Marketo did work with some of the key leading ISPs to do DNS flushes, but uh, just because of the way um, some of these, uh, these things work, took them up to two days to, do, uh, to get 100% availability. So that was an interesting one. So make sure all you guys who have domains that you maintain, and I think 100% of the team here would be doing that, pay your bills on time. <laughs> um, cool, so let me on that note move into the second one. So the first one was more DNS related. The second one here is AWS S3. Um, this was, I think, one of the biggest outages that we saw first half of the year. Uh, lots and lots of collateral damage. So um, again, what we're doing here is we are monitoring S3. Um, AmazonAWS.com as a service, um, and our cloud monitors uh, to a, uh, S3 as well as some of the other SaaS services um, on February 28th start uh, saw an extreme dip. So all the way from 100%, the availability dropped down to 0%. Um, the impact was not just on S3. Uh, major services like Cora, Coursera, Docker, Down Detector, which is uh, surprisingly a, a service to detect when things are not working, were all dependent on that, and those all went offline at the same time. The other really interesting thing that we saw with some of our analysis as well as our customers was a lot of internal AWS services like ELB, uh, some of their database solutions, et cetera, also dependent on S3, and we were able to see some of our customers who were hosting their websites uh, with uh, using ELB infrastructure, et cetera, having issues. Uh, so let's jump a little bit deeper into this, into the analysis for this. So what you see here is a very high correlation. So as soon as my server availability goes down to, uh, let's see. The server availability goes down to 0% here. There's a 100% packet loss in the bottom graph, uh, as you can see here. Um, so let's 
drill down deeper, so it definitely looks like a network-related issue is not related to any application layer. Uh, when we jump into this, again, using the same uh, TCP-based uh, path visualization technology that we have, we are seeing that traffic's actually being dropped um, in the network. Uh, very interesting to see that the traffic's actually being dropped inside Amazon. So if you look at those red uh, bubbles there, uh, those are actually sitting inside Amazon's AS and inside Amazon's network. So that's a clear indication to the fact that there's an internal issue happening here. Uh, one of the key questions we got inundated by our customers about was, hey, is this a DDoS attack? You know, thinking on the back of what happened with Diane just a few months before that. Um, but there's a few things that we saw which made us believe it wasn't. One is the drops, et cetera, were all happening inside AWS, uh, Amazon's network, and not something on the peering uh, locations. Uh, secondly, the impact was zero to 100 instantaneously, and not a DDoS attack, which would typically take a little bit of time to build up. Um, our, uh, we posted the blog, and then two days later, AWS came out with a postmortem where they did uh, acknowledge the fact that it was a, a human error where they deleted more servers than they were supposed to in a regular maintenance cleanup. So, cool. Uh, key takeaways from this, uh, you know, the, there's nothing called too big to fail, I guess. <laughs> um, I know I'm running out of time here, but I'm gonna very quickly do a third one. This is uh, Ross Telecom. This is uh, Russia's uh, government-owned internet service provider, and on the 26th of April, we saw some really interesting uh, BGP updates coming out of them, uh, where Ross Telecom leaked uh, quite a few routes. Um, there was a total of 130 seven, I think, 136, 137 prefixes which were announced and withdrawn. 100 out of them were Russia-owned prefixes. 36 of those belong to the world's largest financial companies and internet security companies. So very interesting choice of uh, prefixes there. Uh, Ross Telecom did come out and say it was a mistake, but it was a very targeted mistake. <laughs> Got to get into trouble for that. Uh, in terms of the <laughs> services impacted by this, uh, Mastercard was a big one. Uh, Verisign uh, was there. Symantec, RSA, a bunch of uh, banks as well were impacted. Uh, Ross Telecom did uh, give a public apology um, about that. Uh, so let's see what was happening in this case. So what they did essentially is Ross Telecom went and advertised um, a bunch of these prefixes. So AS. Uh, one, two, three, eight, uh, one, two, three, eight, nine went and advertised and then withdrew those prefixes. Uh, they appear with some of the bigger, uh, largest tier one ISPs in the world and uh, peers like um, ISPs like Cogent, uh, which is 174, Hurricane Electric, Tata, 6543. They actually accepted those routes. Um, and so now what was happening was traffic for, through any of these locations was going through uh, Ross Telecom and then being sent to uh, their uh, final destination. What we also saw was a few ISPs actually did not accept the advertisement. So what you see in this uh, picture here is you see some of these uh, uh, rhombuses, those diamonds which are orange in color, which were the BGP monitors or the vantage points around the world that Thousand Eyes monitors. So what these do is they will actually be listening to BGT up, BGP updates um, around the world. So a monitor, for example, in London did pick up the change, whereas some of the other monitors that you see in the green, so for example, uh, Stockton, San Jose uh, in California, US, did not uh, accept, were not impacted by this root leak. To confirm this, what we did is we actually again went back to our path trace, which is our TCP uh, path trace path visualization technology, and what we see here is really interesting. Traffic from Toronto to one of the destination services is actually being sent into uh, Ross Telecom here. Um, in York, in the UK, it does uh, 60 hops. That's a lot of interfaces. Lots of inspection stuff happening there, I guess. Uh, and then it actually, we don't show it, but those blue, uh, blue labels there are is Cogent. Exits the Ross Telecom network on Cogent and then goes to the final destination. Um, that was a little bit about the BGP um, route leak view. Um, if you guys are interested, all these uh, share links, which I was uh, trying to share here, but I'm having uh, there's a little bit of a problem with the mouse. I couldn't go into this. All this data is actually available for you guys to play with. Uh, there's also some really nice blog posts that our uh, teams have written, so please read that. Uh, we have a booth outside, so if there's any interest, questions, you want to talk about it, you want to discuss more about Ross Telecom and, and the BGP root leak, uh, come by and have a chat. And 
thank you for your time. Any, any, any questions? Okay. All right, cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you.